Hi, my name is Eric Jackson. Uh, today I am coming to you from Durham, North Carolina, which I had no intentions of being in, but uh, in this case I actually had to write down the story because it was almost too hard to fathom all in one shot. So uh, it, it goes something like this. I'm currently enjoying an unexplained southern hospitality in Durham, North Carolina from the owners and, not necessarily owners, but from the staff at Bojangles Restaurant. And it's a Saturday morning here. It is July 26th. Uh, I am supposed to be in Manhattan at an Andy Golub body painting event with Craig Tracy and Mythica and Shelly and Jess and all my friends, but I'm not. I'm here in Raleigh Dorm, and, or Dorm, North Carolina. I'm a little west of Raleigh, uh, and that's a 212 number for the bus behind me. And this restaurant is on Hillsborough Road, uh, and until midnight last night, I had no intention of understanding what the level of North Carolina's hospitality was. But unfortunately, I was on a bus, not this one, but one very similar to this, that pulled up about 40 feet in front of where I'm standing right now, where they store their bus on the property adjacent to Bojangles. I took the bus at 7.30 p.m. from Columbia, South Carolina. It was $60 online on gotobus.com, G-O-T-O, bus.com, and GoToBus charged me which I found out later, twice as much as if I had called the bus company or if I had just walked up and paid for a ticket on the spot, to the degree that the bus company felt so bad that they were charging everybody else less that they, in fact, gave me a coupon for another trip back to South Carolina. And I said, unfortunately, when I get back to New Jersey, I'm moving to Denver. Do you have a bus to Denver? They said, no. I said, then I can't use it and gave it back to him. Now. After that, everything was wonderful, spoke and interacted with the driver because of my disappointment of overpaying, but I still felt it was worth $60 to get from South Carolina directly into New York City rather than having to fly from Florida, and I was in Boca Raton at a FAU campus with my son, and I would have had to go to one of the airports, Miami or Fort Lauderdale, that would have taken time, I would have had to then go on to get a pick up at the airport in New York to get into the city or pay expensive money for transportation. Now I chose my travel arrangements accordingly. I typed in South Carolina to New York bus in Google and I still feel bad now that I trusted Google more than I did my research. Uh, it was not smart of me. I should have done more research. Uh, not that I've found anything to say bad things, but what happened to me is going to be the bad thing. Uh, what I did was get to the location in Columbia. My friends went on to their festival in Westminster, uh, both in South Carolina. They're enjoying themselves still today as the second day of their festival and they're having a grand time. I'm supposed to be in Manhattan at a body paint event where 40 fully nude models and 30 of the best body painters or some of the best body painters from around the country, I don't want to discount anybody that didn't come, uh, from around the country were painting today. And this is the industry that I involved myself in and it was a grand business opportunity for me to interact with a lot of other people that I have not yet met. But I missed out on that and I'll live. But the China, Oriental Pearl Bus at Pearl bus, buspearl.com is the operators of this bus line. I got on the bus at 7.30. I asked the bus driver if we were making any stops or it was straight through. He said, no, it's straight through. I said, okay, thank you very much, so I can go to sleep. He's like, oh yeah, you'll be able to sleep. The bus driver was Asian. I communicated with him very clearly. There was no seem to be lack of understanding for his communication back. He wasn't just yesing me to death. It didn't seem. I believe the driver's name was Mr. Liu. I got on the bus at 7.30. I fell asleep some hours later. 
I woke up at 4 a.m. locked inside a bus that was in a parking lot, not running, and nobody else was around. I was laying in the back three seats of the bus. Understandable that I would fall asleep on what is to be a 12-hour bus ride. I did. My luggage was underneath the bus in one of these chambers. My full backpack that I've been backpacking with, like a cross-country type backpack or backpacking through Europe type backpack. And they moved my luggage to another bus and transferred buses and at no point in time checked the inside of the bus and woke up the sleeping human being in the back three seats. So I awoke, and I'm going to read this uh, for verbatim because it's, it's actually an order of operations that took me time to think about what I was feeling. Now, I'm looking around, and I open my eyes to a dark, quiet bus, and I'm laying down in the back seat. But it's too quiet because I realize that we're not moving. I pick my head up, everything's dark and silent, no driver in sight, we're not moving. I look across the street and I see McDonald's through the bus window at 4 o'clock in the morning and it was lit up. In seeing the McDonald's, my thought and assumption was, oh, perhaps they went to get breakfast, and they were just nice enough not to wake me. Okay. Then I look a little closer, and I realize that the red blanket and the pillow that the couple was here five seats in front of me is no longer here, and there would be no reason to take that into McDonald's, and I could feel it in my chest at that moment that I'm alone. I was just left alone. Did not have my phone in my hand or in my pocket. It was in my bag. I had to turn back around immediately, grab my bag, and look at what time it was. And it was 4 a.m. And I was panicked because it didn't seem right anymore. Their stuff should be here if they only went to McDonald's. I now get to the front of the bus. And if they had gone to McDonald's, the door would probably be left ajar for people to come back to the bus. Like, it usually is for a tour that I've taken many, many times, and we stop at a rest stop and go in. And we don't, we're grown-ups, we don't all wait outside the bus like we did in high school for the bus driver to push the button and let us in. We just get back in the bus. And I've done it many times, and I didn't think much of it. And I walked to the front of the bus expecting to be able to get out, and I was locked in. I'm now locked in a bus that's parked and I'm now standing in the front on the side of a highway road in a local town, not on the side of a highway on the way to New York at a rest area. And the panic set in. And there's a little red switch, and I don't know if you can see it on this bus. No, it's not, it's not the same style bus. But there's a little red switch right inside the door. and. It said emergency. And I turned it. And I heard a little air relief as if there was a piston or something hydraulic happening. And the door did not open. And nothing happened. And I pushed the door and nothing happened. And I started to panic more. Then I go pull out my flashlight because my Blackberry doesn't have one. I pull out my flashlight out of my bag from the back seat to now look at the bus driver's panel to see if there's a button to release the door and get me out of this 85 degree summer overnight stuffy. That's the only reason I woke up is because I was sweating, by the way. It's not because of noise or anything else. The bus was silent. Um, and the bus was pretty quiet to begin with. It wasn't a loud, noisy, bumpy bus. It was a decent bus. And I was pleased. I had no problems. I was pleased right up until the second I fell asleep. I was pleased with the driver. I was pleased with the other passengers that I interacted with. I was pleased with the whole day that I waited in South Carolina for the bus. But when you wake up alone on a bus, 
locked in because you were sleeping in the back seat, there's something very, very wrong with the operation of the bus company. And in this case, it's Oriental Pearl Travel out of 47 Christie Street.